Okay, the next one. All right. Um, so it looks like from here, a squamous proliferation is kind of going down into the dermis. Definitely making yeah. keratin, and it's pretty heavily inflamed as well. Um, so I'm worried yep. about like an invasive squame. I know you can see heavy inflammation in patients who have CLL um, or like the lymphoepithelioma like carcinoma um, that can look uh -huh. kind of similar as well. Yeah. So look, first let's talk about the squame. And again, I've, okay, I'm going to flip it one second. One more. No, there's like no, it's like perfectly at the wrong angle. Look, this is why we hedge about stuff, okay? If you just had a shave of this, you could say it's a cyst. I mean, there's there's no atypia there. It's got a granular layer. It's loose keratin in the middle. And then over here, you could say, well, oh, that's glassy. That could be keratoacanthoma. It's even got the little elastic fiber trapping, right? Well, what the heck's going on down here? It turns much, much uglier. I mean, honestly, to the point of, I would say that's, at least I would probably call this moderately differentiated in, in my book here. And I you would start to even think, gosh, is it turning like spindled? And it, not quite, but I mean, it really looks ugly enough that I even would start to wonder if it's going to have an area of like poorly differentiated. So this is why I get a little cautious about calling stuff keratoacanthomas when I only see part of the lesion, especially because I've seen multiple cases like this that did not look bad at all at the top. And then down at the bottom got crazy ugly and real nasty looking and you know atypical mites and you know, ugly almost almost on the verge of spindling so that worries me but i like your point that you brought up here that there's a lot of inflammation and you know what's interesting is the inflammation is here kind of around vessels away from the tumor too so when you see a sheet of monotonous small round lymphocytes or a bunch of lymphocytes around you know this is around nerves here but are around vessels away from the tumor always think about the possibility of chronic lymphocytic uh, leukemia small lymphocytic lymphoma cll sll uh, because it's relatively common in, in in older folks the people who get squames people that have it badly begin to get immune uh, suppression from the tumor basically from the cll and uh, I've seen cases where patients had numerous really aggressive squames because I think that it was because they had CLL. So basically, and I, I remember one and I was going to pull it up to show you, but I forgot. So I'll have to, to do that later and insert it into the video. Um, but it, an example of really nasty CLL in the hand invading all the way down to tendons. And when they resected it, I saw sheets of lymphocytes and I thought maybe it's CLL. And sure enough, when they checked the guy's blood, it was CLL. All his nodes and his marrow was involved. He had numerous uh, metastatic lymph nodes with squamous cell carcinoma and i remember talking to the surgeon and he said this guy has got like squames like a transplant patient would have and i said that's because basically his cll is wiped out his immune system and so he was having that same kind of phenomenon so uh ever since that case which was the it was on his squame excision that we actually discovered that he had cll ever since then I've been particularly careful and I've found a couple of cases where we found CLL in the background of the skin um, from, you know, in the background of a basal or squame, something like that, uh, and that they didn't know the patient had it. So it's a, I mean, it's a common enough disease that it's out there. And if I see a dense infiltrate and they look very small and monotonous, you can't really see the cytology here, unfortunately, but they have these very uniform nuclei and supposedly kind of a soccer ball or a football. If you're watching this from another country, aside, aside from America, um, a football pattern of chrome if you've got a good imagination maybe but you definitely can't see it on this scan so anyway if I do think about that what my panel is is I usually do a, a CD3 CD20 and CD5 3 will mark the T cells 20 will mark the B cells and 5 should only mark normally the, the T cells not the B cells but if I see a lot of B cells and they co-express CD5 then that's very worrisome for CLL then you can do additional markers to confirm it and and do additional workup but that's kind of the screening panel that I use when I suspect CLL in the background if I see a dense infiltrate so anyway good to know and not just in the background of squames if I see that on other types of specimens too and think about CLL like, look, see, that's like more dense perivascular inflammation than you normally see. Um, and it's way away from the tumor here. So it seems um, like it's something else going on, not tumor related. All right, guys.